Welcome to the Evening Review. My name is Sukhan Ekhaghe. Joining us in studio is civil rights activist Omar Van Rinen. Before we go into that interview, please have a look at the front page. Welcome to the Evening Review and thank you for accepting our invitation. Thank you, Khone. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, do, there's been a lot of ac activity in the, in the past three months, if I, if, if I sum up my time correctly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and if one looks at what the LGBTQI community has been doing, particularly staging demonstrations and so forth, do you think that as members of the LGBTQI community, there, there is enough there are enough privileges and um, protections, um, you know, for, 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 for members of the community enshrined in the Constitution. Right. Um, if, if I may, I would like to start off this interview by reading the preamble of the Namibian Constitution. Um, the preamble of our Constitution says, whereas recognition of the inherent dignity <laughs> and of the equal and inalienable rights of all members of the human family is indispensable for freedom, for justice, and for peace. Article 10 of the Namibian Constitution mandates equality and freedom from discrimination. It states that all persons will be equal before the law, and it says that no persons may be discriminated against on the grounds of sex or on the grounds of your social status. Mm. Our sexual orientation and our gender identity as part of the LGBTQ community is a social status and discrimination based on sex is discrimination based on our sexual orientation. Look, Ohone, the nature of injustices is that we may not always see it um, in our own times. Um, the liberators of, of whom uh, our President Hauke Bakaienkorp was part of, mm. uh, they wrote and ratified the Bill of Rights, which is enshrined in our constitution. Um, they did not presume to know the extent of freedoms in all its dimensions and so they entrusted future generations a charter which is chapter 3 of the Namibian Constitution which protects the rights of all persons to enjoy liberty as we learn its meaning and right now we do not enjoy that liberty so what is the meaning of liberty of freedom and of equality to us as a born free generation mm. who are part of the LGBTQ community there is no meaningful freedom if there is no equality. How can we call ourselves born free if we don't have equal access to the law? LGBTQ rights is not only a civil rights issue, it's a human rights issue. But LGBTQ rights is the civil rights issue of our generation, and it's a civil rights issue that disproportionately affects the youth of Namibia. Mm. The Constitution is an essay. It's an essay of our aspiration towards celebrating our diversity as our biggest strength as society, celebrating our aspirations towards true justice and true equality. Um, and Article 10, which I just read uh, previously, it's tr truly a beacon of inclusivity and it's a bridge to a Namibia that shows that we honor, respect and accept one another's dignity, my dignity as an LGBTQ person. So we would not be marching in the streets, we would not have all these court cases if that dignity and that equality has been granted to our community. Day-to-day mm. um, <clears throat> -day experiences um, lived as, as a member of the community, you know, when, you, when you're out there in the streets, so s for example, if you, live, if you leave the studio now, and you go about your business to the supermarket, or you go home, <coughs> or you go have lunch with a friend, whatever the case may be, what, what other experiences or what are the things that you confront on an almost daily basis? Right. Um, so there is severe discrimination in society. But let me be clear that this discrimination uh, towards the LGBTQ community, it's not innate. It has been taught, right? It has been taught to us by our government and by our leaders. LGBTQ persons have always thought of themselves as citizens, mm. as Namibians, as well as myself. 
But the question is, is whether the state and society thinks of us in the same way back. There is a continued assault on our equal rights, on our civil rights, which is absolutely essential for equal citizenship um, of LGBTQ uh, Namibians. Now, what we are dealing with is state-sanctioned homophobia, mm. which is both denying LGBTQ Namibians full equality and full freedoms. So let me run through some of the things we are facing. There are more than 10 active court cases right now that are dealing with LGBTQ rights against one single ministry, and that's the Ministry of Home Affairs, Safety, Security and Immigration. Um, sexual orientation was removed as a prohibited form of discrimination from the Labour Act, which has been in there since 1992. But it's been removed by the then Minister of Justice in 2004, mm. which was Honourable Kawana which means that your boss can fire you if you display your sexual orientation or gender identity in the workplace. The Combating of Domestic, Viol Domestic Violence Act only protects domestic violence in opposite sex relationships. So what I'm saying is that there's a bill in the People's Parliament right now that says the state will only protect domestic violence if you're heterosexual. Is that equality before the law? The sodomy, the, uh, sodom the criminalization of sodomy, which is in the law right now, mm. that polices our sexual activity, that polices gay men's um, right to choose the person they love. Uh, the Combating of Rape Act, the Maintenance Act, the Criminal Procedure Act, the Immigration Act, the Combating of Immoral pra pra Practices Act, it all criminalizes um, uh, uh, sodomy acts or de facto homosexuality specifically amongst uh, gay men. Mm. There's no joint adoption for LGBTQ persons in Namibia. There's no protections for LGBTQ people in education. There's no protections for LGBTQ families. The right to health care for LGBTQ people are constantly violated. The right to social security for LGBTQ partners are not recognized in Namibia. But that are, that's just, you know, the tip of the iceberg of what we face. We face discrimination in our, in our families, we face discrimination um, in the workplace, in society, but it all stems from the, the state giving us a lack of recognition, mm. a lack of you exist, your dignity matters, and you are Namibian too. Mm. Um, you know, having raised these issues, um, well, excuse me for the, you know, um, so it's just train of thought. How do we get? How do we get society? You know, past that. How do we sort of deal with discrimination? Um, you know, how do we play? Le start um, leveling the playing field for LGBTQI members of society and those that are non-LGBTQI. In your opinion, a uh, very very good question, and thank you for asking that. Let me be clear: homosexuality is not a Western import into Namibia. Homophobia is the Western import. Homosexuality has been celebrated, has been accepted by traditional Namibian cultures, or Shuvambu, or Vahimba, Nama cultures, did not only celebrate um, homosexuality and gender diverse persons, they embraced them, they uplifted them. But then when we were colonized, and then when we fell under the apartheid regime, homophobic British penal codes, which is the code that we are still having in a born free independent Namibia, criminalize our free love, criminalize our consensual sexual activity, mm. and criminalize who we choose to love. So just as Nelson Mandela said that racism is not innate, it is taught. Homophobia is not innate, it is taught. So there's a lot of unlearning that needs to happen in society, and it's up to uh, our government to make sure that they protect our minority rights so that it doesn't give a license to discriminate for um, your average uh, society. Mm. Um, uh, recently, the recent issue of the two twins um, being brought back and the battle to, brought, uh, to bring them back. Um, you know, wh wh what do you, wh what do you, wh what, what, what can us as Namibians in society at large um, learn from, 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 from that recent exercise? Yes. So, um, Paula and Maya Degado Law, it's really a reckoning of Namibia. It's a reckoning of who we are as a nation and what we aspire to be. Mm. So what does family mean to you? I can tell you what family means to me. Family means to me free love. Family means to me um, my single mom that raised me. Family means to me my sister that has uplifted me. And family means to me my grandmother that has taught me the fundamental pr principles of acceptance and um, inclusivity of everyone. 
A family doesn't mean to me a, a husband-headed household with a wife. Namibians are diverse. There's children-headed households, there's grandparents-headed households, there's um, parentless-headed households. So why are we ascribing to this heteronormative understanding of family? In the Constitution, we have a right to found a family under Article 14. It says men and women can, can find a family, but it doesn't mean that men and women are to find a family together. Mm. So there, it's already showing that our, violation, our fundamental rights have been violated. But um, let me also be, ex be ex explicitly clear that the right to choose one's own partner is a fundamental right entitled to all Namibians, you and me uh, included. The law can't be based on um, sexual, uh, social or religious morality, but the law has to be based on constitutional morality. You can't outlaw people's lives just because you disapprove of it, especially if it causes no harm. Um, but Paula and Maya shows us, uh, or the Paula and Maya situation shows us that um, our government, uh, we're so homophobic that we're willing to separate families, that we're willing to create stateless children, going back to policing free love. When have we seen a government police free love? I can tell you when, 31 years ago, during the apartheid regime, when the government told my parents, my mom, that she, as a colored woman, cannot love a black or white man solely based on the color of her skin. Mm. Now we have a government telling Namibians that they cannot love one another based on their gender identity, based on their sexual orientation. So how far have we come? How much independent have we come? How much born free are we? Um, where you stand on LGBTQ equality now is where you would have stood on racial equality during apartheid. Mm. So that is why we say there is no freedom in a born free Namibia if there is no equality for all Namibians, mm. especially for children born to LGBTQ parents. Mm. Um, I've got two more questions. Um, and um, I want to hone in on the issue of comments that have been made in, in, in the recent past when uh, the whole issue of the sodomy um, legalizing, of the, the, that, that whole issue of, of sodomy came up where you get People say, well, um, we've got bigger problems facing us in Namibia, you know, um, just, just hold on, just, just, <laughs> just, just hold on. And that, you know, yeah, but why do uh, uh, LGBTQI members of society feel that society is against them? You know, they've got equal rights. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't make it, a, we don't make it a mission to, 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 to go after them, to hurt them, to injure them, you know, all of these things come up. What do you say about, about, about such? Um right. So as I've mentioned, LGBTQ rights is very much a civil rights issue of our generation. LGBTQ rights is bread and butter issues. For the government or for people to say we have bigger things to worry about, like unemployment, um, drought and stuff, it, it, it devalues our human dignity and it devalues our pursuit for justice. Mm. In fact, our social identity as LGBTQ people, as a minority group, might push you into those socioeconomic um, statuses even worse. I am gay before I'm unemployed. Um, pe uh, people are women before they don't have equal access to jobs. Uh, people are indigenous before they don't have equal access to education. You cannot deal with all those economic factors, unemployment, education, drought, if you do not deal with the equality on the ground, if you do not deal with the civil rights issues on the ground. So deal with my civil rights issues, give me my equal protection under the law, and that might uplift me into getting a job, into being accepted in a workplace without fear from being fired based on my social, uh, sexual orientation. Mm. So if to say that you have to prioritize issues and that civil rights issues aren't the bread and butter issues, I mean, come on, where do we come from? We come from a, a, a time where people were also told, you know, oh, like there's, there's, there's good hospitals for coloreds, there's good schools for blacks, there's good jobs for whites. We're all fine, you know, there's, why do we have to deal with equality? But people's dignity was still undermined and people's ac equal access under the constitution were not seen as, um, as, 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 as equal. So it's, it's very it's disheartening to hear that um, our LGBTQ civil rights and human rights issues aren't bread and butter issues because they very much are. Mm. And then um, lastly, the coalition, um, recently established coalition, Equal Rights Namibia, 
Um, what was the motivation behind its establishment and what is it that you are hoping to achieve? Right. So uh, the Namibia Equal Rights Movement, known as Equal Namibia, is a youth-led, grassroots activist and community-led um, organization uh, supported by more than 18 human rights civil society organizations that are moving towards our pursuit for realizing the constitutional promise for all Namibians, especially LGBTQ Namibians. But it was really birthed out of the fact that um, we had nothing to celebrate this Independence Day if there was no true equality for all. Mm. We've seen how the oppressed, uh, a liberation movement, uh, have become the oppressors now, have used uh, public policy to disenfranchise minority groups. Um, that we've seen how state-sanctioned homophobia has given ministries a license to discriminate and has told society it's okay go and discriminate because mm. we aren't going to give this minority group uh, equal protection and with the about with the with the criminalization of sodomy your newspaper reported that there's more than 300 people with hiv um uh, inmates. Uh, yeah inmates mm. uh with hiv positive status in prisons because the government doesn't want to protect their public health by giving them uh, condoms. So we see how, how, how very bad this, uh, uh, keeping the sodomy law, a uh, colonial apartheid era law on the books is. But let me just talk about my community a little bit more. Let me talk about what invisibility and pushing us onto the margins of society has caused us. Marginalized groups feel this too often. They feel invisibility too often. We've seen that in apartheid as well. Uh, the LGBTQ com uh, community's invisibility comes from being forced to hide. It comes from being forced to deal with living in the closet for fear, uh, um, or fa for fear of facing prosecution, for fear of being arrested through the Sodomy Act. It gives you um, unwarranted ar arrest. For fear of being fired, as I've mentioned, the government took out sexual orientation as a prohibited form of discrimination. Most importantly, our invisibility has come from fear of being ostracized from our family. And because we had to hide, because I as a gay Namibian man had to hide, society tells us, tells me, that we simply do not exist. Well, let me tell you this. We are queer, we are here. We are queer, we are Namibian, and we belong. This is our country too. Living on the margins of society, living, feeling invisible, has caused a lot of trauma, especially for myself as a gay man. But discovering one's sexuality and one's gender identity, it doesn't have to be a trauma. It's a trauma because you are dealing with a traumatized society. Our society hasn't truly dealt with the trauma of which apartheid has caused on us. And now, like I've said, the oppressed have become the oppressors. So what is the story of Namibia? What is our Namibian African values? I can tell you what it is. It's Ubuntu. And what does Ubuntu mean? It means love. It means acceptance. It means inclusivity. And it means celebrating diversity, not just cultural, traditional, and racial diversity, but sexuality diversity. Mm. Celebrating diversity as our biggest strength and embracing all Namibians, no matter who they are, the color of their skin, or who they love, and telling them that you belong, this is your country too, and the constitution protects you as well. Mm. Thank you for joining us on the Evening Review. Thank you. My, my, my appreciation. Very grateful to be here. Thank you for tuning into the Evening Review. Do have yourself a pleasant evening. But before you sign off, please have a look at the weather.